Hey guys, this is Project EA here with a quick video update and I guess a work in progress start and update as well. Multiple work in progresses, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. It's been a while since I've been able to do any uh, hobby uh, model kit or well, any. Uh, I haven't had a lot of free time. Let's just leave it at that. Um, unfortunately, uh, my I work in a comic shop, and my shop is closing. Um, we're all being moved to a bigger location, so that means we've had a lot, a lot of extra work lately, um, doing the move and stuff. Between that and also, um, earlier this month, uh, was Free Comic Book Day, first Saturday of every May, so uh, it's been pretty busy for the last uh, few weeks, even months, actually. So, that and also in the summer, we're really busy with, uh, we're running uh, screenings for all these superhero films that are coming out, you know, so that means, like, they, a lot of events for Marvel, the Green Lantern film, and so, uh, work's been hectic. <laughs> but I got some free time off today, and I got done with my other job early, so, um, so I, I figured I'd do some updates today. Um, but later, because um, this camera, unfortunately, is not able to, it's getting a little bit old on me. I'm going to have to switch to my old, uh, my old, uh, S700, uh, which is okay, but it's technically inferior. It has more options than this, but uh, it'll have to do. But So I'll be quick with this before I switch over, since battery and this is dying already. Um, I started working on uh, the Sinanju base, the special uh, Sinanju head base for uh, my high-grade Sinanju. Um, I did a coat I've uh, already cut, and then I've already gave it a, gave all the pieces a quick silver leaf cover. Um, and then I actually put some metalizer, uh, buffing metalizer on, so I gotta wait for, and then I'll have to buff in a bit so I can give it a really good sheen. I'm putting together an old, uh, kit that I had laying around. It's a, uh, it's the hanger base, the one that, uh, came with, uh, I think, to Hobby Japan, the June, July issue? No, August issue, I think. Um, gave it a coat of metallic black wing for that to dry. Then we run over here. Um, the resin kit for Techman Blade I'll work on later today. Um, primed, um, but unfortunately never got around to really um, sanding down. Well, no, I got I got a thigh done, <laughs> um, but I got to do some more sanding, and then I'll put some green stuff, and then do some more priming and sanding, and then we'll get to another hopefully a paint uh, one paint treatment before then. And then over here is the rest of the San Andrews, uh San Andrew, uh, head base. We have some gunmetal. Then of course I did some tapering off. For the collar pieces here, so they'll have to be uh, wait for a little bit to dry, and then hopefully they'll turn out well for when I uh, do the uh, tape, yeah, for when I do the gold uh, trim and such. But let's see. Besides from that, um, today will be a special project, actually, for um, a non-Gundam or Plamu related um, item. It is an effect part. So it's actually really interesting. Uh, for the Rebel Tech figure for of Jedhuti from the Zone of the Enders uh, first game. Um, very wonderful figure. I've already checked it out a little bit. Um, hopefully the review will be um, uploaded soon tonight. And uh, it's nice. I like the color scheme in this one, but I also do like the matte color scheme or much more softer tones um, from the second game. So hopefully they'll uh, they'll be released when Anubis comes out and maybe a vector cannon too with it. Um, but I was a little bit disappointed that this did not come with um, two halves to make the burst attack effect part. But um, I can I mean I suppose that's why another three seven hundred yen you'd have to tack on or something. So I guess and I don't know how much that would cost for them to make. So maybe that's also the reason why. But um, no need to fear. We'll make a better one. Well, we'll hope to. To do that, you'll need to stop by your local hobby shop or craft store for a few things. You'll need one of these, which is a clear, transparent plastic um, ornament ball set. Um, they're like two bucks. They come in different sizes. This is the 100 millimeter size. It'll uh, be uh, a little bit too big for the f uh, to be in scale, but I wanted to be a bigger ball anyways, since I thought, you know, it'd be more dramatic that way. You'll need, uh, you'll need, of course, to paint it. So that means spray cans or hand paints, or um, you could also um, uh, airbrush it. 
and I got, oh, I recently got an airbrush, but my compressor broke on me, so um, I'll have to do it old school with, uh, bah, open cams, propel, propellant, so let me see, what is this, ah, here we go, my old Badger starter airbrush from way back when, um, very, uh, nice thing about the propellant tanks, even though they're a waste, um, financially, because they can kind of go pretty quickly on you, um, they si they're silent, they're molt, they're portable, so, um, very easy to use, you can pack it all up and take it somewhere if you need to, but, um, yeah, I'll be doing a custom airbrush mix with that, with some paints, actually, that I have, and then besides that, you'll need foil, and I'll explain what the foil is for later, and then, of course, you will also need plastic, um, You'll need plastic that is uh, thicker than plastic wrap, but thinner than plexiglass. So we're talking like the plastic on uh, window packaging, or if you have any plastic around that's uh, close to it, a plastic bottle will do. So that's what, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on some paint mixing, and then we'll switch over to, uh, to show what the foil and what the other parts will be for, and then hopefully it'll turn out well. Alright, so after cutting up all the uh, plastic bottles to hell and stuff, and playing with super glue essentially, um, I glued on very random odd shapes onto all over the sphere pieces, and then using a blow dryer, I essentially melted it. Um, now, that should be fair enough, or you could use a heat gun uh, to melt things down, or um, I guess I actually used a candle, but um, if you're really, really young, you probably should be careful because you don't want to cause fire and plus um with super glue or other adhesives and then plastic um that's fumes and you know that's not cool so you know be careful um it doesn't look like much except for a whole bunch of shredded plastic on um two ball halves and stuff but together it should um produce an effect that hopefully i'll be pleased with at the or i guess hopefully i won't feel like a waste of time on but with that being said um what the foil is for is for the inside. You're gonna cl color. We're gonna color it in uh, clear paint colors. Some, I guess, a lot of teal, a lot of greens, a lot of blue, a lot of other different weird hue colors. And then uh, we're gonna put this inside of it to give a very nice, uh, kind of like on some model kits, there gems. Except it's gonna be inside the sphere, so it gives a really nice, I guess, very shiny effect part kind of, I guess, um, well, effect. I'm not sure exactly how to describe it. But, um, it's not actually all balled up and stuff. It's actually pretty hollow. Um, but you just want enough just to encompass it a little bit. So that, one, you don't put too much weight on the ball, and two, um, you still cover enough of it so that when it's covered, um, it'll give off the effect that, the desired effect that you want. Hopefully, when it's all colored and everything, um, Depending on what dark parts I want, because uh, I'm actually going to go over with multiple different shades that it'll give off of something that I'll be okay with. And then um, for the Rebel Tech uh, port itself, um, where is it? So, oh, I hand drilled a very small hole big enough for a Rebel Tech port. So yeah. And then I've already mixed up my paint. It's um, so I've used uh, about uh, this much. I want to say that's about a fifth or so clear then about a tenth or so of thinner then another I guess same portion as uh, the clear um, another of a uh, clear green then I used um, I all I eyeballed some blue in I didn't use um, a lot at all actually I used maybe I don't know maybe a tenth maybe an eighth uh, not a lot at all I know those are some random uh, measurements and stuff but usually when I mix I eyeball it a lot so, um, but this is more than enough to cover the whole thing because I'm going to go in multiple coats and stuff. So next time, uh, uh, next time we'll go come back to the uh, burst ball. It'll actually be colored at least with the first coat. So hopefully they'll turn out really well. All right. 